Reincarnated as an aristocrat with an appraisal skill. One episode, one reincarnation. Table of contents. Next. This summer, my father died. Although born a peasant, he had risen to a nobleman's position, albeit a lowly one, with his bravery and courage. His father had suffered from illness for a long time. He was a strong man with a strong body, but he gradually became like a different person, emaciated, and finally died in his sleep. Even though he had suffered so much, he looked so peaceful at the moment of his death. I heard that human beings' pain disappears before they die. On the day of the funeral, my father's body was cremated. There are some areas in the Sama Force Empire where cremation is not allowed, but in this area cremation was the norm. The sight of the blazing fire and the smoke rising from the crematorium made me realize that my father was dead. For one reason or another, I had never truly considered my father to be my father. However, he was still the person I trusted and respected the most in this world. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I had to gulp them down. I must not cry. When I think about what I'm going to do, I must not cry here. After my father's funeral was over, I gathered those who had served under him. I stood in front of them, dressed in fine clothes and taking care to look as mature as possible so that I could look like a grown man. Then I threw out my chest proudly and declared, From this day forward, I, Ars Rovent, will succeed my father, Raven, as the head of the house of Rovent. It was the twelfth year since I died in Japan and was reborn in this world. The death that came to me that day was so staggering. I was a man who had lived a very ordinary life in Japan for 35 years. I was born into a very ordinary family, went to elementary school, junior high school, high school, university, and a decent company, and earned a very ordinary income of 450,000 a year. The only thing unusual about him is that he's not married, but in today's world of declining birth rates, I guess you could say that's just a normal thing. Well, maybe it's not normal that she's never been able to do it properly either. She considers herself normal in terms of her face, but I wonder if it's still a problem with her personality. Lack of aggressiveness is something I've been told by many people. I have also been told that I am always in a daze. I'm not out of line. I certainly don't have a personality that I'm that passionate or aggressive about except for the things I really love. Maybe the reason I couldn't have a girlfriend is because I've never had a woman I really liked before. Well, today is Monday. It was a holiday until yesterday, so it's depressing, but I have to go to work. Holding my beloved business bag in my right hand, I turn the doorknob with my left, open the door and go outside. I took out my keys and was about to lock the door, when, boom, an uncommon pain shot through my chest. My hands trembled loudly and I dropped my keys and business bag on the ground. Then I press my hands to my chest. I couldn't breathe or stand in too much pain. I fall to the ground. What is this? What is this? I can't think straight from the pain. I can't think about anything. My vision starts to darken and I start to lose consciousness. Unable to understand anything about the situation, my consciousness fell into darkness with horrible pain. When I woke up, what I saw in my eyes was a woman's face. I can't quite wrap my head around the situation. Let's go back and think about it from the ground up. First, I was about to go to work as usual. So, I was just leaving the house and locking the door when an intense chest pain hit me. I noticed a woman's face in front of me. A slightly rounded, charming woman's face. She is not Japanese. She is white. If she had collapsed due to chest pains, was this a hospital? But the woman does not wear a nurse's uniform. I don't even know them. She doesn't have any white female friends. To begin with, she has a conciliatory expression on her face, like an owner who loves her dog. It's not the same expression you'd give to one who collapsed and was taken to the hospital. A woman opens her mouth and speaks to me. I have no idea what she's saying. It's a foreign language, but it really doesn't sound familiar at all. I don't speak a major language at least, but I can at least tell which language it is if I listen. She seems to be a woman from a minor country. I try to move my mouth. I moved my mouth, but no words came out. 
she seemed to be able to pronounce only ah and ah. I tried to move my body, but I couldn't move it satisfactorily. It seems to be moving at least. Hmm? Then I brought my hand into view. Small. Surprisingly small. It was like a baby's hand. My mind was filled with question marks. My conclusion that I hadn't seen it right, which I had finally come to, was easily shattered when I looked at my hand again. It remained small. What was this? What a joke. Or... Did I die and reincarnate at that time? Reincarnation is a Buddhist concept that the dead soul goes to the other side of the world and is reincarnated in this world again and again. The founder of Buddhism, the Buddha, taught that to live is to suffer. The human soul goes through reincarnation, dying and reincarnating, dying and reincarnating, and so on. By practicing and becoming enlightened, we can be liberated from this cycle of reincarnation. Does this mean that I am not enlightened, so I am reincarnated? Even if I did, it seems strange that I have memories of it. Anyway, the only thing I understood was that something unusual was happening to me right now. I understand, but there's nothing I can do if I can't speak or move my body. Now we have to wait. I suddenly felt sleepy. Maybe it's because my body is a baby. Unable to resist the intense sleepiness, I fell asleep. 2 Episode 2 Identification Back Table of Contents Next A few months have passed since then. I've learned to understand the language, and there are a few things that have turned up. First of all, my name in my reincarnation, apparently, is Ars Laron. In fact, I can't remember the name of my previous life at all. I can remember what kind of life I had, but only my name is completely missing. If I had remembered it, it would have been better to have two names, which would have been confusing, which would have been the opposite. The other thing I found out was that this world might not be Earth. The reason why I thought so is that the level of civilization is so low compared to Earth. We don't have electricity, not to mention TVs, radios, and smartphones, and we use lamps for lighting. Anyway, there is not a single thing in the house that can be called civilized. I can understand if the house is very poor, but the house is quite big and luxurious. It is unreasonable to call it poor. There is a possibility that he was born into a very unusual family, so I can't make a definitive statement based on this alone, though. There is another reason why I don't think this is the earth. There is a creature in the house that I have never seen before. It looks like a dog, but it's not a dog. It has wings sprouting from its back. If it flapped its wings, it could float two or three meters in the air. If it didn't have wings, it would look like a pet dog native to Japan, like a chin. By the way, its name is called Arsis. A dog with wings and the ability to fly would have never existed on Earth. I have to conclude that there is a strong possibility that this is not Earth. We don't know exactly what kind of world it is yet. But since there are even winged dogs, I think it is very possible that this is a fantasy world. I guess I've gotten caught up in something terrible after all. Three years have passed since then. At the age of three, I can walk and talk, too. I've learned to speak the language perfectly. And I've become somewhat familiar with my current situation. First of all, I was born in this world, but it seems to be a different world from Earth. It seems that I was born in a place called the Sama Force Empire on the Sama Force continent. I've never heard of such a continent and country. I'm sure there is no such thing in the history of the world. I also learned that there was a magic, a technique to create fire, water, and other mysterious phenomena. When I saw the magic, I was convinced that this was indeed a different world. And this Lobant family, where I was born, seems to be an aristocrat. They rule over a small piece of land called Lumberk, which has about 200 houses and a population of about 1,000. I was born as the eldest son of the Lobant family, and it seems that I am destined to inherit the family. To be honest, I'm just worried. Can I, as a businessman after all, be in a position to lead people? It would be nice if I could leave the business to my subordinates and play around with them. And finally, I understand one more thing. It seems that I have a certain ability that ordinary people do not have. Good morning, little man. Good morning. 
I was visiting the parade ground right next to the mansion. The Lobent family had about 120 mobilizable troops, most of whom were peasants. The peasants took time out of their busy schedules to practice on the parade ground. They were practicing various exercises, such as spear pointing and shooting the bow. The little boy comes here often. She's just three years old and it's terrifying. His men looked at him fondly, thinking that a three-year-old child was showing interest in martial arts. In reality, I wasn't interested in martial arts. What I was interested in was the people. I gazed at the man poking his spear in the parade ground and used a certain ability. Its name is appraisal. Appraisal is the special power I possess. When I stare at something, I can obtain detailed information about it. It is possible to appraise only human abilities. It's not like someone told me that this is an ability called appraisal. I gave it a name myself. I thought it was appropriate to call it an appraisal because it is an ability to understand the details of things. As I continued to stare at the man, a black plate appeared in front of me. On this is written the information about the man I'm staring at now. This board is invisible to anyone but me. The board reads, Millet Crystal, 21 years old, male. Status. Leadership 21 35ths. Valor 60 60 seconds. Knowledge 22 30 seconds. Politics 15 31sts. Ambition 3. Aptitude. Infantry D. Cavalry D. Archers B. Magician D. Castle D. Weapons D. Navy D. Air Force D. Plan D. This is how the statuses are displayed, reminiscent of a certain historical game I like to play. Leadership is the ability to lead an army. Bravery is whether you are strong or weak. Wisdom is smartness. Politics is good at negotiating, good at domestic politics, and good at coordinating. Ambition is betrayal. The value on the left is the current ability and the value on the right is the potential ability. As a rough guide to ability values. 100 plus, monster. 90s, superb. 80 units, excellent. 70 units, good. 60s, mediocre. 50 units, subtle. 40 units, bad. 30 and under, no no. This is what it would look like. If it were like a certain historical game, it would be like this. After looking at a number of people, I've come to the conclusion that it's just like a certain historical game to some extent. Next, though, is aptitude. Infantry's aptitude for close combat. Cavalrymen have an aptitude for mounted combat. Archers have an aptitude for archery combat. A magical soldier has an aptitude for magical combat. Castle building is an aptitude for castle building. Weapons are apt when handling and making weapons. The Navy has an aptitude for shipboard combat. The Air Force probably has something to fight for in the sky, so the aptitude for it. Strategy is an aptitude for being able to think of tactics to gain advantage in the war. D is the lowest and S is the highest. By the way, this appraisal, I can't do it myself. Even if I looked at the hands, abdomen, and other places visible to the naked eye, the status would not appear. Even if I looked at my face in a mirror, it was impossible to do so. It's honestly a shame that I want to know what my talents are, but I can't see them. It's the status of Millet Kun who is training now, but his martial prowess is at a minimum, but the rest is devastated. Well, a miscellaneous soldier's status is usually about this much. The others also have a minimum amount of valor, but the rest are devastated. Some of them are not even good at valor. There is one thing about Millet that bothers me. He has a high aptitude for archery. In other words, he should be good with the bow. However, he is currently practicing with a spear. I've been watching him practice for a while now, but he has been practicing with his spear for a long time and has not shown any interest in practicing the bow. Does Millet have no intention of using the bow? Let me ask you. It's Millet there. What? What is it, kid? By the way, did you know my name? Millet is dismayed when he speaks to me. Why don't you use your bow? A bow? Those weapons are just plain stupid. Shooting at the enemy's range. It's not the kind of thing a man does. It was a relatively unimportant reason. If this is the case, it's better to let him use it. 
With a B aptitude, he would definitely be able to handle the bow reasonably well. Try using it once. Yeah, you've got talent, try it once. No, little man, you can ask. Millet tried to say no, but the soldiers said, it's a favor from the boy, don't say no, in unison, so, yeah, okay, I'll do it. I replied with a sigh, it's not that the soldiers are aware of my appraisal. They are simply trying to get in the mood of the Lord's son. Ive never used a bow before. He mumbled something like that and held the bow and arrows. Then he held the bow up to the target. Millet, if it's your first time, you'd better shoot a little closer. You'll never be able to reach the target in that position. And a soldier with a good bow would advise, shoot on the spot. I ordered him to stay away from me and shoot. Millet pulled the string as far as it would go then let go and let the arrow go. The arrow flew straight through the air and hit the middle of the target cleanly. Everyone else's eyes widened at the sight of it, except mine. 3 Chapter 3 Policy Back Table of Contents Next The first time I've ever done it so perfectly. Well, it was a fluke, a fluke. Hey, Millet. Try again? Prompted by the older soldier, Millet fired the arrow again. This time the arrow flew straight and clean and hit the target. It was unlikely to be a fluke the second time. The soldiers were again astonished. Even Millet himself, who fired the arrow, seemed to be so surprised that he couldn't keep his mouth shut. You might as well become a bowman? Yes, I'm talented. You know, you suck at spears. And Millet was encouraged by a colleague. Well, well, maybe the bow isn't so bad. There's no such thing as cowardice in battle, haha. Ha. Surprisingly easily, he palmed it off. He even said it wasn't a weapon for a man to use, the one that was too simple. But, boy, how did you know Millet had a talent for the bow? A soldier man asks me. Those who were present look at me as if they wanted to know too. Would they really believe me when I told them that I could see my abilities quantified? I didn't know, so I had no idea intuition. I answered. The next day I was eating breakfast with my family. Seated at the front of me was my father in this world, Raven Rovent, taking his meal. Raven is very tall, with a rugged face, a sharp look in his eyes, and frankly, a little scary. This man comes from a peasant background but has risen to nobility through his previous military prowess. His military prowess is so great that he can easily handle ten soldiers by himself. Incidentally, his status and aptitude are Leadership 86 86 Valor 94 95 Knowledge 44 56 Politics 23 31 Ambition 67 Infantry A Cavalry S Archers B Magician D Castle D Weapons D Navy D Air Force D. Plan D. This is what it looks like. He is a man with excellent leadership and military prowess, and has the capacity to lead a large number of soldiers as a general. On the other hand, his political power is low, and perhaps that is why he is indulging himself as a lord of a small territory despite having such a high level of ability. After the meal was over, Ars. I hear you spotted Millet's bowing prowess yesterday. He asked. Yes, I do. I'm told that he saw through everything on a hunch. I hear that you have a good instinct for everything. You must hone it. That's one of the most important things you can do as a feudal lord. I've been advising him to be a three-year-old. Well, I have acted uncharacteristically like a three-year-old on several occasions, so I guess I can't blame them. Since I'm the only raven child at this point in time, it's possible that I'm using my own standards for how fast my kids are growing. I'll keep that in mind. I responded that way to Raven's advice. A few months have passed since then. I would be four years old. During that period of time, I learned more about my situation. Let's be clear. To be honest, my future is not bright at all. I, or perhaps it would be more accurate to say that the future of me, or rather of the Sama Force Empire where I live, is not bright. In the near future, this country is likely to be plunged into a turbulent era. This country, which controls the entire Sama Force continent, has no external enemies. 
Since it cannot be attacked without crossing a long strait, war with other countries is unlikely to occur. In other words, what does happen is a civil war. It seems that the people currently in power in the Sama Force Empire are very corrupt. Because of this, there are peasant rebellions in many places. My father, Raven, had also gone into battle the other day to quell the rebellion. It seems that the power of the Emperor of the Sama Force Empire is diminishing rapidly as one rebellion after another breaks out, and the nobles around the country are gradually becoming more and more autonomous. Skirmishes are occurring throughout the empire, but the current Sama Force Empire no longer has the power to stop them. The country is in shambles, and warfare is taking place all year round in various parts of the empire at the moment. It's truly a turbulent time. I have a feeling that if things continue as they are, the empire will fall, the herds will be divided, and there will soon be no skirmishes but major battles. I was born into such an era as the eldest son of an aristocratic family, and I am very anxious about my future. The bottom line is that I will have to go to war many times. As the head of the family, I will have to lead my own soldiers. In times of peace, I might have been able to live in peace, taking it easy and doing my own internal administration, but under the current circumstances, I can't afford to say such things. In my previous life I was born and raised in a peaceful Japan and knew nothing of warfare. How can I be a warrior? Will I be able to survive in these difficult times? I'm just worried. I don't want to die. In a previous life, I was only 35 years old when I died suddenly. There were still many things I had left to do. Even in his second life, he definitely did not want to die an early death. This time I want to die of old age surrounded by my grandchildren. How can I avoid dying? I think hard. And the ability to recognize a person's talent is one of the most important things a lord can do. My father's words came to mind. Right, human resources. Let's get all kinds of excellent people under our command to make this territory stronger. That way, the chances of me dying will be reduced. If this country is going to plunge into turbulent times, the most important thing is nothing but power. I will make full use of my appraisal and gather all the best people. Deciding this, I left the house and headed for the village where people were gathered. 4 Episode 4 Excellent Human Resources Back Table of Contents Next About 80% of the territory's population lives in the village of Lumberk in the Lumberk Territory, which is ruled by the Lorbent family. The village of Lamerg is located near the mansion where the Loban family lives. It's about a five-minute walk away. I headed to the village by myself. This area is relatively safe, so it's not particularly dangerous to walk around alone. Even so, I've been told not to go out alone. However, if you go to the village with an escort, you'll stand out strangely and you won't be able to find personnel. I wear a hood that hides my face to avoid being identified as the son of the Lord, and I head for the village. After eight minutes of walking, I arrived at the village. Since I have the body of a four-year-old, it took me longer than normal. The village of Lamerg is an ordinary village. The villagers live by farming, animal husbandry, and hunting. The atmosphere of the village is peaceful and the food situation is not bad and the health of the villager seems to be in good shape overall. There are about 800 people in total, so it is difficult to visit them all. For the time being, let's just take a look at the young guys. I looked at a young man who was doing heavy work nearby for an appraisal. Hmm, not a very good number. Or rather, this one must have come to the training grounds. If one were to think about it calmly, the young man should have come to the military drill ground because he could move as a soldier when the need arose. In other words, most of the young men in this village would have been appraised at least once. Let's take a look at the woman. Women are considered unsuitable for warfare, and it is almost impossible for them to rise in the ranks in this world. Well, it's just like old Japan. In fact, it's hard to find a woman of high military prowess. Their wisdom, leadership, and political power are not so different from men's, so it does not mean that they are not suitable to be vassals. I'll take a look at the women as well. But they were all subtle figures. 
I looked at the children as well, but none of them had excellent status. Wasn't it so sweet? It seems that no matter how well you can appraise, it's not easy to find excellent people. I've seen so many people that my eyes are tired. When you use the appraisal, your eyes are slightly worn out. I'd better call it quits for the day, as I was about to leave with that thought. Get out? You have nothing to sell for anything? I heard shouting. Curious, I looked in the direction of the voice and saw that a young man had been knocked out of the store and was kneeling on the street. He was brown-skinned and had a face that wasn't like most people around here. If our race resembles white people, that one has the appearance of a dark-skinned Japanese. As I recall, that race is. Isn't that a marka? Filthy, why are you here? You're a wanderer and you came here. I recall overhearing a conversation between the villagers. The marka are a race of people who live in a country across the sea from the continent of Sama Force. Their characteristics are almost identical to this young man's. The race is almost non-existent in the Sama Force Empire, but they are rare. Most of them are descendants of those who were brought in as slaves long ago, and the people of the Sama Force Empire discriminate against the Malchus. Honestly, it doesn't feel too good to see discrimination, but it could ruin my reputation if I help them poorly. Well, though, I'll appraise him for a moment. I appraised the young man with a light heart. Reitz Muis, 14 years old, male. Status. Leadership 87 99ths. Valor 70 90ths. Knowledge 88 99ths. Politics 78 slash 100. Ambition 21. Aptitude. Infantry A. Cavalry S. Archers A. Magician C. Fortress S. Weapons A. Navy D. Air Force C. Plan S. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the results of that appraisal. Of. It's Nobunaga. A truly impeccable and overwhelming status. His ability value was comparable to that of Oda Nobunaga, one of the great heroes known to all Japanese, that's just the ability value in a certain historical game. He was still young and not fully grown, but his future would be terrifying. I didn't know that such an abandoned young man, who looked like a stray cat, was Nobunaga. The world is inscrutable. His name is Reitz Mises, right? I can't leave him here as a stray cat. I must make him my man. No doubt, racially, they will look at me funny, but that doesn't matter when you consider the advantages of having him as your subordinate. I rushed over to his side to make Reitz my subordinate. 5 Episode 5, Take Liz. Back. Table of Contents. Next. You look like you're in trouble. I called out to Reitz. He glared at me at first, but when he realized that I was a child, his expression relaxed. If you talk to people like me, the adults will get mad at you. Don't worry about me, just get away from me. He said as he stood up. Apparently, he is concerned about me. When I approached him and took a closer look at his face, I saw that he had a very well-defined face. If you're in Japan, you can be an idol. It's almost as if he was just starting out. Hair is short and black. He is a large man, maybe in the upper 170s. Considering his age of 14, he looks like he'll grow to the mid-180s. Well, it doesn't matter what Reitz looks like. I've decided to make him my subordinate based on his abilities. I spoke to him, knowing the risk. I want you to be my vassal. I told him directly. Well, um, are you playing a game? UMM, hmm, I'd love to play with you, but I can't afford it right now either. Reitz chuckles. He thinks it's the ravings of a child. I haven't told him he's the son of a lord yet, so of course he will. Not exactly. I am Ars Rovent. I am the son of the lord who rules this village. I've seen an exceptional talent in you and I'd like you to be my vassal. When he hears my words, Leet's expression changes drastically. The lord's son? You? He looks at me with suspicion. It's not surprising. Right now I'm dressed shabbily so that they don't know I'm the son of the lord. He wouldn't be from this village, so he wouldn't be able to get a good look at me. Anyway, if you're in trouble, come with me. No, but. Reitz is lost. He's probably wondering if he can rely on this kid. Then a gooing sound came from Reitz's stomach. Was he hungry? Yeah, 
I know, there's plenty of food. Come to me and I'll feed you. Er, um. Reet seems to be greatly disturbed by my words. And in the end, um, let me just go. He blushed a little and asked for it. You never told me your name. My name is Reet Smuis, and you're ours Lobent, right? Yeah, yeah. On the way to the mansion, Reet's introduced himself to me. I'll take this opportunity to ask him a lot of questions about him. Why was Reet's in that village? It was a long story. I was in a mercenary corps, and many of its members died in the war. Most of the top brass who were in charge died, so they had no choice but to disband the mercenary group. I wandered around from place to place with nowhere to go, and I ended up here. It sounds like you've had a lot of trouble, but since you're probably competent, can't you live on as another mercenary group or bouncer? I asked. I can't. No one would hire a Markan kid with no fame like me. I can't trust them. I've been a member of my last mercenary group since I was a kid. Reitz explained with a bitter smile. It would certainly be difficult for an untrustworthy person to be a bouncer or join a mercenary group. Normally, it would be a strange thing to suddenly make a young man who was seen in the area a retainer. If your appraisal doesn't show that you have the same level of ability as Nobunaga, you wouldn't normally do such an outburst. As we were walking around talking, we arrived at the mansion. Reitz looked at my house, and with his mouth agape, This is your house? He asked me so. I told you he's the Lord's son. I don't mind. Huh? But wait a minute. The fact that you are the Lord's son, the first time I said that you were going to be my retainer, it wasn't as a joke or a plaything. I'm serious, of course. What? Reitz is astonished. It's like he doesn't know what to look like. Let's feed Reitz first and then ask your father to make him a vassal. Master Ars? You've been out there again? You're not going to like this at all. If anything happens, it will be me who gets killed? A butler just ran up to me. He is a butler named Krantz, who is in his early fifties or so. He has served the Lobent family since long ago. He has been taking care of my personal affairs. Preach later, but more importantly, prepare some food. Are you hungry? No, not by me, but by this one. I pointed to Reitz, who was standing behind me. What? Well, he is a Markan. What do you think you're doing, allowing such a lowly person into the mansion? Krantz turned red in the face and scolded me. It's unpleasant that Reitz is being discriminated against, but this is unavoidable. Discrimination against the Marka people has deep roots. Everyone I knew, at least, thought that the Marcus were a lowly race. It is so ingrained as a common sense that it is impossible to change it so easily. A little persuasion would not change it. Anyway, get me some food as soon as you can. He's going to die of hunger. I don't know if I'm going to die, but I said so to show the urgency of the situation. Well I understand. It's a pity that even the Marcus will die, but as soon as you feed them, you have to kick them out? With that said, Krantz went to get the food. But it looks like they hate me more than I thought. Will this make him a vassal? No, I will make sure that I do. Reitz will definitely be an essential person for me. He's going to save my life again and again in the future. I can't afford to miss it. Krantz brought bread and water. Oh, thank you. It was a hard, tasteless, hard bread, but it still looked good, and Reitz ate it. Now, then, kick me out? I can't do that. I brought him here with the intention of making him a vassal. What do you mean, what do you mean, what do you mean? Such a thing? I'm going to talk to your father anyway. I took Reitz's hand and ignored Krantz, forcing my way to the room where my father was. 6 Episode 6 Test Back Table of Contents Next. Father? Make him a vassal? I said as I barged into my father's room. My father seemed to be in the middle of writing a letter. He continued to write, undisturbed by the sudden intruder. And when he had finished writing, he turned his attention to us. You're talking about this Marka, aren't you? I nodded. No. Making a Marka a vassal is a folly I've never heard of. Get him out of here. My father let out a sigh and said that. The expression on his face told me not to play dumb when he was busy. I guess it's still too much to ask. 
But I'm not going to snap at this point. He, Reitz Muis, has a high talent, and it would be a great loss not to have this one on retainer. Look, ours, the Marka are vastly inferior to us Samafers. There is no such thing as talent. This was the prevailing perception of the Marka people by those living in Samafers. All in all, the Marka were perceived to be a distinctly inferior race. I've never compared them, so I can't know exactly, but it's hard to imagine that there's actually that much of a difference between them when there's something as brilliant as the Leeds. Malchus, I don't know about the whole, but this Reeds is definitely heaven's chosen genius. If you have any doubts, I suggest you test your abilities once. My father listens to me and thinks for a moment. Well how do you know it's resourceful? I know what I know. You certainly saw through Millet's archery prowess. Yes, as it was then, my intuition tells me that he has an exceptional talent. My father looks straight into my eyes. It was a sharp look that felt intimidating, but I stared back at him, unfazed. Then I looked into Reitz's eyes as well. Maybe it's because he's had a tough life, but he doesn't seem to be pushed by my father's eyes either. If you're going to go that far, you could at least hire him as a miscellaneous soldier if you tested him and found him to be talented. Okay, I got a permit. It doesn't matter if he's a skeleton man. My father is a meritocrat, after all. I'm sure Reitz would make a good warrior, so he'll eventually rise to the occasion. Even if he doesn't, he'll be fine if I let him rise to the occasion when I take over the house. The test is a simple one. You will have a mock battle with me here and if you win, I will consider you a pass. I am upset when I am told what the test is about. My father's current martial value is 94 and his leads are 70. The marginal number is 90 for leads, so he still has a chance to win if he grows up to be a full-grown man, but it will be difficult to do so now. Um, father. He is only 14 years old. It would be very difficult to win against someone as young as my father. You've got talent, right? There is, but your father has a natural talent for warfare. When Reitz is fully grown, he'll be a good match for you, but I know that's not the case now. I don't fight for real. I will handicap you. I don't know how much of a handicap we'll be at, but then we might still have a chance to win. I don't think we'll get any more concessions, so we'll have to drink. I nodded that's fine. Then the place to fight is the training grounds. My father got up and started walking towards the parade ground. Reitz and I followed. As we were walking. Well, Mr. Ars, why did you decide to make me your vassal? Sympathy? Reitz asked with a worried look on his face. If it was for a reason, I would have made it clear to your father earlier. Didn't you hear me? You're telling me I'm talented? But that's not really my thing. You're good at fighting, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I've been praised quite a bit for my fighting skills, but there's nothing else for me to do. You are not only a skilled fighter, but a leader, a wise man, a politician, you have it all. No, I didn't know I had one of those. I just haven't had a chance to make the most of it. You will serve House Lobant and use it to its fullest potential. Ha, ha. Reitz looks a little unreasonable. Is he unhappy? Come to think of it. I hadn't asked him if he wanted to be a vassal, I had brought him here. I was so preoccupied with wanting to make him a vassal that I forgot to ask him the obvious. This is not good. You don't want to be a vassal of the Rovant family? Then I'll tell your father to stop, right now. Oh, no, I'm glad to hear that you're going to be a vassal, and I think it's the best thing I've ever heard, but I was wondering what such a swell story it is. I've been persecuted everywhere I've gone for being a Marka. I'm not trying to trick you. And I have not yet decided to become a vassal. The tests your father will set for you will be tough. Well, I'm sure you'll pass it. Reed seemed to brace himself a bit when I told him that. It wasn't that he didn't want to be a vassal anyway, so that was good. After a short walk, we arrived at the parade ground. 7 Episode 7 Analog. Back table of contents. Next. When we went to the training ground, the soldiers who had been practicing began to tighten their expressions all at once. My father would sometimes practice at the parade ground, and it was very strict. For this reason, 
When my father came to the training ground, there was a sense of tension. I didn't come here today to practice, he would say. I'm going to test this guy now. The tension in the place loosened at my father's declaration that he would not practice. Then, the soldiers' gazes fell on Reed's. The soldiers' gazes were focused on my father, so it was as if they heard his words and noticed Reed's for the first time. You mean this Marka? Yeah, Ars says that this Marka has great talent. Well, if it were true, I thought I could at least hire him as a miscellaneous soldier. The soldiers begin to buzz as they hear their father's words. A talent for the Marcus. No, you don't, and you say some pretty strange things. No one seems to have any faith in Ritz's talent. Well, we just need to let them know by their abilities. Take the wooden sword. Yes, sir. Ritz and his father picked up the wooden sword and faced each other. As a handicap, if you can take a single sword in a three-minute mock battle, you will win. You will not lose, no matter how many attacks you take until you surrender. Gratz, bring me the hourglass. Ha! Huh? One of the soldiers, Gratz, moved with great agility and brought an hourglass that would fall off in three minutes from the storage room of the training camp. A halfway competent one would actually find it extremely difficult to take a swing at my father. In fact, there is no soldier here who can throw a sword at my father in a one-on-one -on -one battle. But if you are as brave as Leeds, and also have an infantry aptitude of A, you could do that. I'm sure you've never heard your name. We're going to have a mock battle, so state your name. It's Leeds Mises. I am Raven Lobent, Lord of House Lobent. Let's see what you can do. Then Gratz turned the hourglass upside down and the mock battle began. It was my father who made the first move. He moved his huge body vigorously, yet quickly, and swung down the wooden sword held at the upper level. With that much power, if you hit your head, you can't avoid fainting. If it is done poorly, there is a possibility of death. A normal person would have fallen flat on their backside under the pressure of that pressure, but perhaps because of the fact that he or she has been through a fair amount of trouble, Leeds calmly stepped back and avoided the sword. Reeds quickly turns to attack, but despite slashing with so much force, his father quickly regains his position and avoids Reeds's sword. As expected, Leeds was surprised to see that as well, with his eyes wide open. My father was not a muscle idiot, and his skills were top-notch. Now my father would be the one to attack. Reeds was surprised, but he wasn't phased, and accepted his father's attack. Then, with tremendous speed, the slashing began. The soldiers, who had been foolish at first, became silent when they saw the attack and defense. None of the soldiers here could compete with my father in a decent one-on-one -on -one match. My father is taking it rather easy on them so as not to kill or seriously injure them, but even so, most of the time he is quickly dropped with his wooden sword and loses. It's not just a matter of hurling a single sword at them, it's not even a proper match. What we have here is a soldier with a good amount of training, but even so, he's not my father's opponent. This time my father is fighting for real, as if he doesn't care what happens to his opponent. Reitz hasn't taken a step back from that. If he was one that knew how strong his father was, he had no choice but to watch and keep his mouth shut. But gradually, as a quicksilver, Reitz began to be pushed. At first they were able to attack, but gradually they were becoming more and more defensive. Half of the sand in the hourglass had fallen, but neither of them had hit the attack yet. Neither has Reitz, but my father hasn't been able to make a single move on Reitz either. If you think about it, getting attacked by the enemy in a real battle would mean dying, according to the point of hit. These two men, who would have plenty of experience in actual battles, might be unlikely to be attacked by the enemy. In that case, it's doubtful that this handicap is a real handicap, isn't it? I begin to think that this is a bit bad. I might lose this one. It's hard to convince him after he loses and is rejected by the Quicksilver. In this fight, my father would have recognized Reitz's talent, but he's still a man who abides by his decisions once he's made them. He would never hire him. I watched the mock battle, praying that he would somehow take a swing at me, even if it was just a fluke. The sand has almost completely fallen away and there is only a few minutes left. 
My father, as usual, is starting to run out of energy, and his movements begin to slow down. As if he had been waiting for it, Reitz attacked his father, squeezing all his remaining strength and energy out of him. This would be his last chance, a prepared attack. It was at his feet that Reitz aimed. My father wasn't expecting it, his defense wasn't up to the task, and he was hit in the snare area. The soldiers watched the outcome of the battle with stunned expressions, unable to understand what had happened. Even though Suno was attacked, his father was not hurt and stood still. It was called Benke's crying place, but it didn't seem to be my father's crying place. However, Kano Reitz succeeded in taking a swing at his father and won the mock battle. On the contrary, even in the actual battle, now that was a victory for Reitz. If they did it a few times, they might lose more often, but this time, Leitz won. Well you won. I'll hire you as a miscellaneous soldier as promised. My father told him, slightly chagrined. 8 Episode 8, Premonition. Back. Table of Contents. Next. I was relieved to see Reitz win. I'm not going to be able to get the same thing done. It's a good thing he won, and he's a Marka. None of the soldiers had any objection to the idea of making Reitz their retainer. It could be that no one dared to interfere with my father's opinion, but they wouldn't oppose it because it would be a welcome thing for them to have a strong one come in. If they had even one reassuring companion, they would have less chance of dying themselves. My father put down his wooden sword and then came down to me. You're right, I saw a definite talent for the sword in Reitz. He'll be a superb swordsman in the future. My father said that after playing directly against him, he saw how talented Reitz was. The talent of warfare is only one of the talents that Reitz possesses, and it's really more of a talent as a general and politician. You have seen through Millet's talent with the bow before. And now you've seen through Reitz's talent. I think you have some special powers. My father seemed to have guessed that I was equipped with an appraisal. As I've said before, the ability to spot talent is a very important ability for a lord. But if you only detect them, there's a good chance you'll dig a grave. You have to have the ability to handle them. As usual, this is not a story to tell a four-year-old. But the ability to handle? It's a plausible story. No matter how much talent you gather, if you don't have the ability to handle it, it's useless. On the contrary, there is a risk of being betrayed by a talented subordinate and having your life taken away. We must keep this in mind. I'm sure that your ability to spot people is genuine, and if you can learn to handle them better, you could be a big shot in this war-torn world. A great nobleman, no. My father took a breath. You might even become an emperor. That's what he said. Emperor. In other words, my father must have told me that I would be able to quell the warfare on this Sama Force continent and become the champion of the age. I don't think I can become such a grandiose existence, and I don't intend to become one. It sounds like there's a lot of trouble. Anyway, as long as I can stand around and not die. Ha ha ha, I'm just joking. How could I become an emperor from a small fiefdom like this? What do you mean, as long as you're alive to see this family survive to the next generation, that's all that matters. I think my father was joking about it too. He laughed as he patted my head. Then he left the parade ground and went back to his room. After my father left, the soldiers of the training grounds surrounded Reitz and asked him to have a mock battle with them as well. Do they want to feel how strong they are? But Reitz's hands were shaking from the fierce battle with his father, and he was unable to hold the wooden sword. Therefore, the mock battle with the soldiers was to be carried over to a later date. Now, it's good that Reitz has become a retainer, but he hasn't decided where he's going to live. The soldiers have a house in the village and they live there. We can either find an empty house in the village or live in this mansion. When I asked my father, he told me that there is a vacancy in the servants' room and that I should let them live there. I was also in favor of letting them live in the mansion because I thought they would be discriminated against and would not feel very comfortable in the village. In return, I got to do my job as a servant as well as fight. Um, is it really okay for me to be a retainer, me? That story again, you've said the same line 30 times since you decided to become my retainer. 
I had been giving Leeds a tour of the mansion. The servant said he would show me around, but I wanted to talk to him about things and get to know him, so I said I would do it. No, because I couldn't believe it. I can't believe that I'm going to be a nobleman's retainer. This family is just the lord of a weak fiefdom, and you are only employed as a miscellaneous soldier. It's not something you can dream of. No, no, but I really wasn't taken anywhere, so it's dreamy enough. Reeds gets a faraway look in his eyes. I wonder if he's remembering the struggles of the past. He then drops to his knees and hangs his head towards me. Lord Ars, if it weren't for you, I would have died in the wild. Thank you so much. He thanked me. There's no need to thank me. I made you my vassal because of your strength. I have great hopes for your future work. Yes, I hereby swear that I will spend the rest of my life repaying the favor you have given me, Master Ars. Reeds swore, powerfully. I decided to believe that oath. He would never betray me in the future and would save me from my predicament again and again. I foresaw such a future when I heard Reitz's vow. 9 Episode 9 Study Back Table of Contents Next Then a few months passed. Reitz succeeds in making a difference in the war. He also began to be noticed for his intelligence. My father, who fought alongside Reitz on several occasions, saw through his intelligence. He gave him a book to try out, and he immediately understood what was in it. As expected, my father was astonished by this. From then on, he received an advanced education and so on, and in effect, he became unfit to be called a miscellaneous soldier. As a result of his education, Reitz's intellect grew significantly, and he is now at 89. He is almost in the 90s. And now Reitz doesn't go into battle, but has been given a certain position by his father. Well, Master Ars, shall we continue our studies today? That position is my education officer. At this point in time, Reitz had acquired one of the best knowledge in the Lobent family. Considering it's only been a few months since he began his studies, it's a phenomenal progress. As the eldest son, he has put a moderate amount of effort into my education, and it seems that he has assigned Reitz to be his educator in an effort to make him an excellent literary and military heir. I've spent the past few months working on finding people and neglecting to acquire knowledge of this world. Therefore, learning from Reitz was something I wanted to do. Reitz took the book and turned to face me. Today, let's talk about the current state of the Samaphor's empire. As he said this, Reitz opened the book and showed it to me. There was a map of the Samaphor's continent, where the Samaphor's empire was located, drawn. It's a rather sketchy map. It seems that the cartography skills of this world are not that high. Well, I told you before that there were originally seven countries on this Samaphor's continent and they were united to form the Samaphor's Empire. Yeah, the Samaphor's continent was originally divided into seven nations. The Lophile Kingdom, which was located in the northeast of the continent. In the northwest of the continent, the Kingdom of Kenship. The Kingdom of Ansel in the east-central part of the continent. Schultz's Kingdom in the central west of the continent. In the middle of the continent, the Kingdom of the Paradisal. In the southwest of the continent, in the Kingdom of Sites, the Kingdom of Mythian, in the southeast of the continent. These seven. There is a strait between the continent of Samaphors and another continent, the Kingdom of Ansel, which trades with countries outside the Samaphors continent, accumulating power and invading other kingdoms. After invading all the kingdoms, Anasazes Badras, King of Ansel, came to call himself emperor and renamed the country the Samaphors Empire. Incidentally, these country names still remain as local names. For example, the Kingdom of Lofail is now called Lofail Province, and the Kingdom of Kantheap is now called Kantheap Province. The one who governs each province is called the Governor General. The Viceroys are the descendants of the Emperor's bloodline, or the descendants of the King who surrendered to the Ansel Kingdom at an early stage and escaped execution. Our territory of Lumberg is in the province of Mythian. Mysian is a good land with four seasons, a lot of flat land, so there is a lot of food and a large population. This year will be the 203 years since the Samaphor's Empire was founded. 
The current Sama Force Empire is no longer in a dying state. The governors of the provinces are no longer obeying the orders of the empire, and they are slowly beginning to become independent. But even so, the influence of the Bedras emperor family is not low, and the territories owned by the emperor family are not small, so if a competent person takes command, they may be able to reel it back in. Is the head of House Bedras a capable man? The present head of the family, Bedras 12, is a child of 8 years old. The real power seems to be in the hands of the vassals. I don't know the details, but since there's no one person in power, and various factions are fighting each other, I don't think they're doing well. Even under such an emergency, they're still in trouble. That seems to be no longer good for the emperor family. Well, it's not just the Bedras family that is fighting in the inner circle, nothing else. Even in the Mythian province where we are located, there could be a war for succession in the near future. What do you mean? The current governor of Mythian, Amador Sailmakia, is very old and I have not heard of him becoming ill, but it is likely that he will pass away within 10 years. Master Amador has two sons. Normally, the eldest son should be the one to take over, but his younger brother is the better one, and he is wondering which one should take over the house. If he dies before deciding, there is a high probability that a war will break out. Even if he dies after making a decision, the probability of war is not low. Both of my brothers and sisters seem to want to take over the family. A battle for succession? It could be a big battle if it's not done well. Small battles seem to have happened a few times, but when it comes to big battles, it has never happened since I was born. If a battle for succession really does occur, if the losing side ends up on the losing side, it is possible that they will lose their territory. On the other hand, if the winner of the battle is able to play an even greater role in the war, he or she will receive additional territory. By the time the battle occurs, my father will be alive, so he will be the one who decides which side to take. What is he going to do? Which side is my father going to take? Master Raven seems to think it's only right for his brother to take over, but it's not for him to decide which side to take. That's what I've been told. This is because my father is not a direct vassal of Governor Mizian. Each province is divided into about 20 counties. The one who controls the counties is called the head of the county. This Lummerg territory is in Canale County, and my father is the head of Canale County. If we refer to this Lammerg County as the address of Japan, it is called Lammerg, Canare County, Mythian province of the Summer Firth Empire. The point is that the head of Canale County decides where he will be attached to, so my father has no authority to decide. Well, he's in a position to voice his opinion, so there's a chance that the mayor of Canale County will decide which side he'll be on based on my father's opinion. Which side do you think Leeds would prefer to take? I mean, is it me? Hmm, I've never met either of my brothers, so it's hard to say. I thought I could tell since Reitz is high on intellect and politics, but I guess I didn't have too many stones to judge. My appraisal is going to work well when deciding which side to take like this. If I can measure which of the brothers is better, and which of them has more talented people on their side, I should be able to detect which one seems to have a higher chance of winning by using an appraisal of those things. And if we manage to persuade our father if we disagree with him, and furthermore, if we can get him to persuade the mayor of Canale County, we'll have a winning horse. Small fiefs like the Rovent family should see this term as an opportunity. If they can play an active role in the war and rise to the position of county mayor, it will be a great breakthrough. In order to do so, they should build up their strength in the future. Reitz concluded his story there. Then he continued to study for a bit, and when he was done, well, I'm going to go out looking for people today as usual. If we're going to build up our strength, we're going to need good people. I suggested. I understand. I'll go with you. Lately, Reitz has also begun to follow me in my search for personnel, as well as an escort. I've finished looking at most of the personnel in the village, and lately I've been looking for them in nearby towns. There were a few people in the village who seemed to be of decent use, so I made them my vassals, but I haven't been able to find any Leeds-level personnel. 
In order to go to town, you need an escort because of the dangers that follow, but if Riots is there, it's very safe. Well then, let's go. Yes, sir. I headed into town with Reitz. 10 Episode 10, Searching for Human Resources in Town. Back. Table of Contents. Next. Ars, you're going into town today? The moment I left the mansion, my father spoke to me. He was dripping sweat from his face, as if after a sword swing. Yes, I'll go find the best people for you. I see. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you'd be good at magic. Is it magic? Yes, magic will be the key to the future of warfare. You can't use magic without talent. I can't use magic properly either. I have a few vassals who can use magic, but they are still lacking, so if you have any talent, please bring it to me. Magic. I don't know much about magic. My father told me to use it once. I filled a strange tool with a red liquid and cast a short spell that triggered it. A small fireball was generated and flew towards the target. But then my father said to me, looks like you're not cut out for magic, and I was never allowed to use it again after that. I was pretty impressed when the magic was activated, so I'd like to use it again. Does that mean I didn't have the talent to use magic? It's a good thing that you don't bother asking me if you can tell just by using it once. I'm sure he used a magic that he doesn't feel very talented in. I understand. I'll go find someone skilled in magic. You're on it. I gladly accepted my father's request and left for town with Reitz. We use horses on the way to town. I can't ride, so I'm riding two of them, with Leeds holding me up. Reitz is a quintessential cavalry aptitude s. He was so good with the horse that it made my father groan. Using the horses, they would reach the town in about two hours. I intend to stay in the town for about two days. Reitz, since I don't know much about magic, can you teach me? Using the time on the road, I decided to ask Leeds to teach me about magic. Magic? Do you know the basics? Yeah, I've used it once. I put a red liquid in some weird equipment, cast a spell and it went off. Yes. That strange equipment is called the catalyst machine and the red liquid is called magic water. When you fill the catalyzer with magical water and cast a spell, the magic water is consumed. The magic water you put in it will be consumed. It's called a catalyst machine and magical water. Let's remember. Originally, magic was used as a sideshow because the spells were thought to be too long and too weak to be used in battle. However, with the development of the catalyst, the spell was shortened and increased in power, so it came to be used in warfare. It seems that about 10 years ago, it started to explode within the Sama Force Empire. Is that recent? Yes, even when I was in the mercenary corps, the old soldiers were lamenting the recent development of something so outrageous that it was troubling. It wasn't something that had been used in warfare earlier. It was unexpected. Is it often possible to get magical water to fuel it? Magic water is made by melting a stone called magic stone. The magic stones themselves aren't that rare, but the price seems to be rising due to the increasing demand and it costs a lot of money to operate a magic unit. Money, the Loban family doesn't have much of an income. As it is a small territory and has no specialties, its income is small every year. It's just a matter of managing to make ends meet. Even if you don't form a troop, it will make a lot of difference if you have one competent magician. We should be able to hire at least one person. Let's go find one this time. Yeah. Then I was rocked by horse for a while and arrived at the town. The town I visited this time is called Conneray. It is the main town in Canale County. It is surrounded by a magnificent wall, a walled city. There are quite a few houses outside the walls. This is probably because it was peaceful for a long time and there was no need to defend it. Naturally, the castle was built in the era before the unification of Sama Force, so it is quite old and seems to be in a state of disrepair. In the center of this town stands Canale Castle, where the chief family of Canale County and the Piles family live. I walked around the town outside the castle. Nowadays, only people of high status are allowed inside the castle. Well, 
I can go in because I'm the son of the Lord, but I have no use for the inside of the castle for this search for personnel. The town outside the castle is quite busy. There are a lot of people here. The entire population is about 50,000 people. It's going to be quite eye consuming to look at all of them. But you don't have to look at them all. Just look at the poorly dressed ones. There is a good chance that we won't be able to hire any of the talent in this town, even if they are good. We would invite them to come to Landrock, but many of them would not want to come all the way to the village from the town. They can't pay that much for it either. You can only hire those that are very much in need of money. If they are living in the village from the start, they are basically willing to accept the job. Anyway, those that look wealthy are not likely to come, so we can only look at the poor ones. Well, let's find them. Yes, sir. From my horse, I went over to the poor people on the street, looking for them in the street, lividly. It's not that easy to find them. I found a few that were reasonably good, but this time I didn't call out to them since my goal was to find those with high magical soldier aptitude. Unless they were as good as Reitz, but if the best ones were in the upper 60s, there would be no need to hire them. My eyes were getting tired and, incidentally, I was getting hungry, so I took a break. Once I got off my horse, I decided to go to the market to buy something to eat. When I reached the market, it's a person with a bill hanging around his neck is in the prison. You're a slaver. Slavery, which once existed on earth, is real in this world. But so is slavery. There is some resistance to the idea of buying someone else, but there might be some good people in slavery. There's no need to go to the trouble of negotiating to make them vassals, and it's easy to do. The problem is the price. In the meantime, I have money in my possession to pay for it as an advance but will I be able to buy it with that? Let's see for now. Let's look at the slaves before we eat our food. Do you buy slaves? There might be some good people out there. Yes, I'm here. Reitz didn't seem inclined to do so, but he didn't object. I went through the slaves in their cages one by one. There was no such thing as a good person, and just when I was about to give up on the idea that it was no use. Charlotte Lace, 11 years old. Status. Leadership 65 90 seconds. Valor 93 slash 116. Knowledge 34 40 fifths. Politics 31 40 fifths. Ambition 1. Aptitude. Infantry D. Cavalry D. Archer D. Magician S. Castle D. Weapons D. Navy D. Air Force D. Plan D. I witnessed this amazing status. 11 episode 11 by. Back. Table of Contents. Next. 92 in Leadership, 116 in Martial Prowess, and S in Magical Aptitude. This is a tremendous number. The other stats aren't much, but these values of leadership and bravery are tremendous. Even now, while he is still growing, his martial arts and valor values are almost equal to his father's. Combat ability is determined by the numbers of military prowess and aptitude. Even if her valor is high, if her aptitude is AD, she's not very strong. She's also AD except for magic, so it's assumed that she's not very strong in combat using anything other than magic. However, she probably has an overwhelming fighting ability only when it comes to magic. She looks like a girl with long blue hair and a face that looks like she's made up. When she grows up, she'll be quite a beauty. Well, I don't care what she looks like. I have no choice but to buy this girl. I'll take her home and make her a magical soldier. How much is this girl Charlotte? I asked the slaver. What? Oh, Charlotte. Five silvers. You want it? Five silver coins. It's not that incredibly expensive when you consider that it takes ten gold coins, ten silver coins for one gold coin, for an adult to live for a year. If you look at the amount of slaves around you, you will find that on average, men are more expensive than women. As a labor force, it's probably because they're more useful. This girl is young and has a beautiful face, so the price is set slightly higher than other female slaves. The gold that she currently possesses is five gold coins. It was quite possible to buy them. I'm not going to be able to get it for you. 
Don't tell me you are planning to buy that girl? Yes, she has a tremendous magical talent. Well, um, I'm not doubting ALS Sama's eye for people, but she's a girl. I don't think Raven Sama will forgive me for that. There is an idea in this world that women are not supposed to be in the fight. Basically, the idea that battles are for men to fight is a notion that has been rooted in many parts of the earth. If you said she was going to be a soldier, you would be looked at stranger than recommending the discriminated against Mark elites as a vassal. If you're not good at it, they might think you're crazy or something. Well, no matter what they might think at first, if you let her use her magic, it will shut it all up. Anyway, this girl definitely has the talent to use magic. It would be folly not to make use of it just because she's a woman. Leeds seemed to give up on my strong will and held his tongue. I paid the slaver one gold coin and got five silver coins for my change. Every time. With that, the slaver let Charlotte out of her prison cell. Then he handed her the chain connected to the collar around her neck and the key to the collar. The collar is not appropriate for her, who is about to fight and probably have a great deal of success. I try to undo her collar. Hey, hey, kid, that's a quiet guy, but you should wear a collar just in case. No problem. I didn't mind, but I removed the collar on Charlotte. She doesn't run away, but stands there. Why did you put the collar on? I heard Charlotte's voice for the first time. I bought you not to make you a slave, but to make you a vassal. You will not deserve a collar. He didn't seem to understand what was being said. I'm hungry for now. Let's talk more about it over dinner, shall we? We decided to buy some food at the market and get a bite to eat. My name is Ars Lobent. I'm Leeds Mises. Nice to meet you. After we ate, Reeds and I introduced ourselves to Charlotte. She wasn't very hungry and didn't eat with us. Charlotte Leith, nice to meet you. She returned the greeting, too. Her voice was flat and without inflection. As I told you earlier, I bought you from the slavers to make you a vassal. He explained to Charlotte that he was the son of the lords of Lamark. I'd like you to remain a vassal, if possible. I found out he's the son of a lord. I have nowhere else to go, and I don't mind being your vassal. But I am a woman. I don't see why I should be your vassal. Did you think it was a man? Sure, I don't have breasts, but I am definitely a woman. Would you like me to show you the proof? I was wondering what he was going to do with the evidence and then he started trying to take his pants off. Wait, 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 I know you're a woman? I stop myself in a hurry. Well, well, you're right. It's impossible to mistake a beautiful girl like me for a man. You call yourself a beautiful girl, not that I'm wrong. Reitz whispered. He's a bit strange, isn't he? Is it okay? He asked with concern. It doesn't matter if you're a bit of a freak, as long as you're talented. I said, but I was feeling a little uneasy. Why would you make me, a woman, a vassal? It's because you have a magical gift. Magic? I've never even used it. What talent do I have? Charlotte tilts her head. It doesn't look like he's lying. That's strange. I thought he had experience in using it because his martial value is still high at the moment. No matter how high the limit value is, is it possible for the valor to be so high with no experience? I'm not doubting my own abilities, but just to be sure, I'd like to let him use his magic once. I've had Leeds bring the equipment for using magic to me in the meantime. Reitz, let's let her use her magic for once. I understand. I can't use it in the city, so let's go outside. Yeah. I headed for the plains outside of town with Reitz and Charlotte. 12 Episode 12, Overwhelming Talent. Back. Table of Contents. Next. Now, let's get you to work your magic. When we arrived at the plains, we made sure there were no people around and gave Charlotte the tools to use her magic. It was magical water and a catalyst machine. The magic water is in a water bottle made of leather. The catalyst machine looks like a sphere about the size of a baseball, with a large amount of unreadable and mysterious characters written on it. It has a chain attached to it and is used around the neck. Reitz first fills the catalyst machine with magical water. The catalyst machine has a lid, and Riots took it off. 
Then he pours the magic water in the water bottle into it. The sludgy liquid flows into the catalyst machine. There's only a small amount to put in. Once the magic is used, all the magic water inside will be gone. Therefore, it is impossible to fire continuously. Put this around your neck. Leeds handed the catalyst machine, which was filled with magical water, to Charlotte. She took it and put it around her neck as she was told. I've put it on, but how does it work? You can use it by casting a spell while it's around your neck. The magic water that you poured into it is the magic water of fire, so you can use magic with the attribute of fire. Hmm? Are there different kinds of magic water? I've only seen red magical water. Is there another kind? Yes, we have them. Blue, green, all sorts of things. What happens if they're different colors? The color of the magic water determines what attributes it can be used for. The red magic water can use magic of the flame attribute, so it is called the flame magic water. Blue magic water can use water attribute magic, so it is called water magic water, and green magic water can use wind attribute magic, so it is called wind magic water. How many attributes do you have? There are many. In addition to the three attributes I mentioned earlier, there are also the attributes of lightning, darkness, light, ice, sound, poison, shadow, curse, healing, strength, and more. There's more than you can imagine. It's so many even with the number I mentioned, but there are still others. I wonder if there's a difference between the shadow and dark attributes or something like that. I guess the fact that they're separated means there's a difference, though. In my Xian province, the flame magic stones are often mined, so the main one on the market is the flame magic water. After the flame magic water, I guess the next thing circulating in my Xian state is the sound magic water. Sound, what is sound used for? If it's a battlefield, do they use it to give a signal? Or do they make a roaring sound that can break your eardrums? That would be no good because they would be damaged themselves. Can't you tell us the spell? I was so engrossed in the explanation that I had left Charlotte a bit out of it. Oh, sorry, I'll tell you now. Reeds hurriedly teaches the spell. The spell I'm going to use this time is the fire bullet spell. Fire bullet, burn the enemy to the ground is the spell. This is the magic I used to. The flaming bullets fly in a straight line and explode when they hit something. The scale of the explosion is small. It's just that the scale of the explosion of my fire bullet was small, but if a talented person released it, there is a possibility of a bigger explosion. When you use magic, you have to put your palms out in front of you. If you don't, it won't be triggered. Right? Left? It's easier to aim with your dominant arm. Okay, left. Charlotte seemed to be left-handed. There were trees popping up on the plane, and Leeds told her to aim at one of them and shoot the fire barat. Charlotte pointed her left palm at the closest tree that grew closest. Fireballs, burn your enemies to the ground. I cast a spell. Then, the catalyst machine momentarily lit up. At about the same time, a flaming bullet flew out of Charlotte's palm. It flew at a terrific speed and hit a tree. A tremendous sound rang out around them and a huge explosion occurred. The tree disappeared without a trace. A large crater was left behind where the explosion had occurred. Reeds and I look at it with a stunned expression. When I used it before, the power of the explosion was about as powerful as a firecracker exploding at best. I was shocked to see how much it could change just by a different user. Eyes, this is pretty amazing. Seriously, it's not just great. I've seen magic soldiers many times on the battlefield, but I've never seen a fire bullet explode like this before, is this really the first time you've used it? Charlotte nodded coyly. No doubt about it. She's a magical genius. I didn't need Reeds to tell me that, once I saw the magic, I knew. But our Sama's ability to spot talent, it's truly amazing. I admire it. Reeds said as he looked at her respectfully. It turns out that Charlotte is a tremendous magic user, just like her status. If I witnessed the power to that extent, my father would have to admit it. With the confidence that she could become a vassal, we made our way back to the mansion. 13 Episode 13, Show Off Your Talent. Back.
Table of Contents Next, we had planned to stay for two days, but we had found personnel early, so we were on our way back to the compound. Three rides on a horse. Since I'm a toddler and Charlotte isn't as stunted as she should be, riding three people was possible. However, with three people on board, it is impossible for the horses to run as fast as they can, so they are not moving very fast. I didn't know I had that kind of talent, they say the heavens don't give you two things, but it was given to me. Suddenly Charlotte was muttering something like that. What is two things, and what is the other thing? The face. I see. This girl seems to have an unusually high self-esteem about her own face. I'm not wrong, though, so I don't have anything to say about it. How did you know I had a magical talent? I can tell at a glance what talents I have in others. Ha. Huh. He replied as if he didn't know if he was impressed or not. Charlotte is a bit of a grasping personality and we still don't know what kind of person she is. My father told me that not only do I need to see through it, but I need to treat the personnel properly. In order to do so, I must properly grasp the character of the person I am going to make a vassal. I decided to ask how Charlotte came to be a slave. Why did Charlotte become a slave? And there are circumstances that make it difficult to listen and speak in tears. He was even enslaved, so he must have had a spectacular past. I thought he might be reluctant to talk about it, and might even hold his tongue, but he started to talk. I grew up in a slum and never knew my parents' faces. Suddenly there is a heavy past. Did he have a terrible time there and was sold out or something like that? I've been through terrible things on a daily basis in the slums, not that I was a leader of the bad boys in the city. Not at all. She was a leader? Well, there wasn't much of a disparity in body size between the S asterisk XES when she was a kid, and she had a high level of leadership, so it wasn't surprising that she was a leader. The lord of that slum was a bad guy, he took a lot of taxes and was a pissed off guy with a lot of luxuries. We were running out of food, we were starving to death, so we went into the lord's house to steal food, but he found us and caught us. Normally he would have been executed, but because he had a good face, he was sold into slavery for a higher price. It was a rather self-inflicted reason. If the lord was truly vicious and had been forced into a situation where if he didn't steal, he would die, then it might be inevitable that he stole. How did you cry? No, I'm not crying you're not crying for all the talk and tears you've been saying about it. That reminds me. Even when he pointed it out, he was unconcerned. I tried to talk to him, but I still couldn't get a grip on him. I knew how he became a slave, but I couldn't get a grip on his character. After that, after being rocked by the horse for several hours, we arrived at the mansion. It was evening when I arrived at the mansion. I hurriedly went down to my father and asked him to make Charlotte a vassal. I will not. The answer came back as expected. What do you think you're doing? What do you mean by turning a woman into a magical soldier? Women are to be protected by men, not sent into battle. I thought your father would say so, but her magical talents are exceptional, so I brought her here. My father looks at me with a stern look. Raven Sama, what you say, ALS Sama, is true. She, Charlotte Wraith, has the magical power of a single rider. Reitz defends me. The look on our faces was desperate. All right. I'm sure you'll be able to show me your skills. If you're right, and you have tremendous talent, I'll make you my vassal as a magician. My father finally broke, too. After that, the location is changed and the testing begins. It is very dangerous to use Charlotte's magic in the training grounds. Therefore, we look for another large, empty space. It was originally a field, but it is now unused and there was an area that was overgrown with weeds, so I placed a wooden box there as a target. From somewhere, rumors had spread that they were going to test Charlotte, and the soldiers had come to watch. A woman as a magical soldier. I wonder what the boy's reasoning is, and whether he'll be able to do it again. You want to make your own future wife because you have a good face. Don't be silly, boy, you're only four years old. It's a lot of selfish things. Once he sees Charlotte's magic, he'll shut up, so I don't mind. Then let's begin. 
With her father's words, Charlotte begins to prepare to use her magic. The method of setting it up is simple, so it's done once you see it. Then, with the palm of her left hand pointed at the wooden box, she chants a spell and releases a fire bullet. The flaming bullets flew in a straight line towards the box and hit it. The explosion was a bit bigger than the first time he used the magic. After using it just once, Charlotte's magic had grown. It was a terrifying sight to see what would happen if she started practicing in earnest. The soldiers who were watching were stunned as they watched. They rolled their eyes, sweat dripping from their cheeks. Even my father, who was rarely surprised by this, seemed to be unable to keep his open mouth shut at this appearance. Silence reigns over the place for a while. And then, all right, we'll use her as a magical soldier. My father told him, upset. 14 Chapter 14 A year has passed. Back. Table of Contents. Next. It has been a year since Charlotte began serving the Lorbent family as a magical soldier. The county of Canale, where Lumberg is located, is located in the westernmost part of the province of Mijian, on the border with the province of Sayas. We have a territorial dispute there, and skirmishes have occurred rather frequently. Each time it happened, my father was sent to fight. Therefore, he had to go to battle about five times in a year. Charlotte's success on the battlefield was tremendous, and she had become an indispensable part of the Lobent family. Her military prowess rose to 101 within a year. Furthermore, before long, she had become the leader of the magical soldiers serving the Lobent family, and her leadership had risen to 73. With that elusive personality, how he was able to lead others is a mystery. He was said to have been pulled out of other families for his sensational success. I've heard he's turned them all down. I don't know why he turned them down, but I'm glad if he feels indebted to me. Reitz, as always, was my educator. Because of that, he hasn't been able to make a big splash on the battlefield and make a name for himself like Charlotte did. I asked her if she was teetering on the edge of not being able to go into battle, as she was undoubtedly capable, but she said she had no complaints, as there was no job more prestigious than being the future head of the family's education officer. It is possible that he was lying, but my hunch was that he meant it. And recently, congratulations have been in order. I had a twin brother and sister. They were born recently, about two weeks before now. My current age is six years old, so they are reasonably far apart in age. Well, my mental age is farther apart because I still have memories of my past life. His name is Kreitz, the younger brother, and Ren, the younger sister. Kreitz is my brother and Ren is my sister. I appraised them both and looked at their status. Kreitz is. Status. Leadership 182nd. Valor 189th. Knowledge 133rd. Politics 121st. Ambition 77. Aptitude. Infantry S. Cavalry B. Archers A. Magician C. Castle D. Weapons D. Navy D. Air Force D. Plan D. Like this, Len. Status. Leadership 122nd. Valor 121st. Knowledge 191st. Politics 185th. Ambition 33. Aptitude. Infantry D. Cavalry D. Archer D. Magician D. Fortress C. Weapons B. Naval C. Air Force B. Plan A. This is what it looks like. He's only a baby, so his current status is one, but both have very good potential. His older brother, Kreitz, is similar to his father in that he has excellent leadership and military prowess, but his wits and political skills are weak. His infantry aptitude is S, so he would be very skilled with swords and spears. On the other hand, her younger sister Ren has high intelligence and political power, but low leadership and military prowess. She has an A in strategy aptitude and has the potential to be a military strategist. Will it be like having twins to make up for their shortcomings? However, a woman born into a noble family can be raised to marry into another family, so it may be difficult for Ren to remain in the Rovent family for a while. It might be possible that I could say to my father that Ren is smart enough to learn military strategy. 
But would that really be in Ren's best interest? That would make it harder for her to get married this time. It might be the wrong thing to do for her happiness. What kind of child will she grow up to be, and what will she do? The other thing that bothers me is Christ's high level of ambition, which is 77. Those with high ambition are more likely to betray him. If you make them dissatisfied with their circumstances even a little bit, they could turn on the enemy or revolt. Over 60 is the high end of the scale, in the 70s, it's not very common. It is necessary to grasp and control the character of Kreitz properly. That's enough for today. Reitz said as he lowered his sword. I had been taught the sword by Reitz at the training grounds. It's bad enough that you can't at least handle a sword in a pinch, so I decided to teach him. My progress was not very fast. Reitz and my father, who is six years old, say that's about right, but I can understand my own inadequacies. Apparently, I didn't inherit my martial arts skills from my father. Well, it's not that I want to acquire the military strength to beat the enemy to death on the battlefield, so I don't need that much talent. That kind of thing can be left to the talented ones. I reopened it as I wiped the sweat from my practice. Master Ars, there is something I would like to put in your ear. What? There are three brothers and sisters, the older two being 12 and 11 years old, but they are tall and strong and it seems that they have a reputation for becoming great men in the future. Why don't you go and see them? Well, it's usually a pattern in these cases that it's not a big deal. Still, if you're in the village, it doesn't take a lot of effort and I guess I should at least go see it. Let's go there, shall we? I'm sorry, sir. I went with Reitz to the village of Lumberk. 15 Episode 15, Military Officer. Back. Table of Contents. Next. We headed to the house in the village of Lamerg, where the example family named Keisha lives. The first time I visited the village, I tried not to be exposed as the son of the Lord, but now I went without changing my appearance. This is because the sixth time I was in the village looking for personnel, I was found out and caused a commotion, but after going there a few times since then, I guess they got used to me coming to the village and there was no particular commotion. Therefore, I no longer had to disguise myself. Now that I'm walking with Reitz, and this isn't the first time I've done this today, I'm not particularly crowded by the villagers. This is where the Keisha family lives. We arrived at a slightly shabby house. It's not a house to enter, even for this village, the respectable one. I stand in front of the door and try to get in. Then the door was opened vigorously. Oh, wow. A child ran out of the house, crying loudly. It was a neutral child with a thin body, and at first glance it was hard to tell which gender it was. Probably a boy. His hair was golden, shaggy, and unkempt. He is smaller than I am now, and looks younger. The boy took one look at me and ran off at a brisk pace somewhere, continuing to cry. I didn't have time to appraise it. I wondered if it was the child of the Keisha family. But the children were 12 and 11 years old, I think Reitz had said. No, come to think of it, he said they were three brothers. The brother who was rumored to be strong had another brother below him, didn't he? The third brother didn't look very strong, but well, he's still very young. He would be able to grow up as much as he could in the future. Cora, Roselle. Wait. This time a large man came out of the house, shouting at me. The man noticed me. Are you? Oh, are you the son of the Lord? The man changes his hue as he realizes I am the son of his Lord by looking at his clothes. How I am the Lord's son, ours. What do you want in a house like mine? I have heard that the son of this family is very good, and I came to take a look at him. Oh, oh, well, you're welcome. My name is Greg Keisha. Please come in. He seemed quite welcoming. He didn't look too good when he saw the marker reads, but he didn't mention it, obviously because Reitz was well dressed and he knew that he was a vassal. By the way, Greg's status was only a little high in martial prowess, and the rest was mediocre. By the way, there was a kid who came out crying earlier, is that Greg's son? His name is Roselle. He's the third son, but he's not as good as the two older boys. He's weak and cries easily, and there's nothing he can do. Just now, 
At the age of five, he was peeing in bed, and when I scolded him, he ran away crying. I don't know what kind of a grown-up he is going to become. If you're only five years old, you'll grow up to be whatever you want to be. I guess so. But, as expected of the Lord's son, you can't compare it with Russell's. You're not much older than him, either. The only reason I'm solid is because I'm reincarnated. I think I was at least five years old in a previous life when I was five years old, and I had at least one one-shot. After that, I was introduced to my first and second sons. I'll introduce myself as the son of the Lord. My son's name is Gados, the eldest son, and Marcus, the second son. Indeed, both were tall and stocky for their age. I looked at their statuses, and they were better than I'd imagined. The marginal values of leadership were both in the 40s, not the vessel of a general, but the marginal values of martial prowess were 77 for Gados and 75 for Marcus, and even with the current numbers, they were good numbers, 67 for Gados and 65 for Marcus. Wisdom and politics are both low. In terms of aptitude, Gados had an A in infantry, all others were C or D. Marks had an A in archery, all others were C or D. Gados was a C or D in close combat, Marks was a C or D in archery. You could say that Gados is good at close combat, and Marks is good at long range attacks with the bow. I wasn't surprised if they were not good at all, but it seems that sometimes rumors can be relied upon. What do you think? These two are pretty good. If you want to be a soldier in the future, you should have them training on the drill field tomorrow. I answered Ritz's question. Oh, good for you. You guys said you wanted to be a soldier and make a name for yourselves? Greg is apparently a hunter, but he seemed rather welcoming that both of his sons were going to be soldiers. Both of my sons are enthusiastic that I appreciate them and will gladly train them in the military camp. You can come in tomorrow as soon as possible. Yes? When I heard a pleasant reply, I left the house. So my third son, Roselle, who had just left the house in tears, had returned home and we had just met. If my two older brothers are excellent, then maybe this third son, this boy, is also excellent. On a lighter note, I looked up Roselle's status. I looked at the status and gasped. Roselle Keisha, five years old, male. Status. Leadership 35 88 Valor 11 30 seconds. Knowledge 45 slash 109. Politics 32 95 Ambition 21. Aptitude. Infantry D. Cavalry D. Archer C. Magician C. Castle A. Weapons A. Naval C. Air Force A. Plan S. He had such tremendous wisdom that he was going to be a great military strategist in the future. 16 Episode 16, Get Permission. Back. Table of Contents. Next. This intellect limit value is just a tremendous one. With 109, there are probably not many people in the Sama Force Empire who can surpass him. Other than that, he also has excellent political and leadership skills. The only thing that's low is his martial prowess. He won't have any talent for combat. Currently, he is only 5 years old, so all of his ability values are low, but if he is raised, he will surely become an excellent vassal. I thought the two older brothers were good enough to come here, but to have a kid like Roselle. It was a fortuitous thing that the Keisha family moved to this village. Aru-sama, do you care about that boy? As I stared at Roselle, Reeds called out to me. Ah, this boy has exceptional potential in intelligence. If you raise him, he will eventually become a good soldier. It's just that he still has potential, and I'd like to see him get an advanced education. Then it would be a good idea to study, together with Master R's. If she's that smart, I'll be happy to teach her. Studying with me, that would be good. Reeds is an excellent teacher and I'm sure he'll be up to speed in no time. The only question is whether he and his father will give me permission to do so. Roselle has been silently trembling since earlier, staring at me. He has tears in his eyes. He seems to be frightened of me and reads. It's not like I've done anything in particular, but I don't know why I'm so frightened. Neither me nor reads are that scared of what they look like. 
if it's that we cry when we see our father, I don't understand. Oh, Roselle? His father, Greg, comes over and exclaims when he sees Roselle. You're the one who said hello to Master Ars? Roselle shook her head. You've got to say hello. You are the son of a great lord. You're a totally shy guy, you? You were the type of person who was shy. To be so frightened, that's pretty bad shyness. Well, in Roselle's case, her political power is also high on the margins. I think it is difficult to do politics with shyness, so perhaps training will help you recover in time. Greg has just arrived, and let's talk about getting Roselle educated. It's Greg and Roselle. We need to talk to you, okay? Hmm? You still wanted to talk to me? I mean, I'm not the only one you're talking to, Roselle? Looking at this Roselle, he has the talent to become a military strategist in the future. Naturally, since he is a child now, his abilities are low at the moment, so I want him to receive an advanced education. Roselle is a military officer? You little pissant? You're kidding, right? All kids pee in bed. It's nothing to be ashamed of. But he's really bad, he can't look people in the eye, he's much thinner and smaller, and he hasn't grown up at all. The two brothers were not like that, and even when they were five years old, they were much more solid than Roselle. It seems that Greg's reputation for Roselle is lower than I thought. Perhaps they only look at his physical strength and not his intelligence. Even at this point in time, he is undoubtedly a smart one for a child, so if he had been born into a family that allowed him to learn, he might have been hailed as a child prodigy but there is no opportunity for him to learn anything about learning in a hunter's house. The fact that the two brothers are excellent in military prowess may have added to their low opinion of him. It is true that if you only compare their military prowess, Roselle is far inferior to her two brothers. But in terms of overall strength, on the contrary, Roselle's is far superior. At this point in time, I felt that it was difficult to get Greg to acknowledge Roselle's abilities. I guess I'll just have to ask for this anyway. It's true that Roselle has talent. If I can get him to study under me, I have no doubt that he will become a good military strategist. Will you give me permission to let him study in my mansion? Well, if Arsama says so, I have no reason to refuse. Roselle, okay. Roselle nodded silently when Greg told her that. It wasn't so much his own decision as it was his parents' decision to follow it. He didn't look too sunny. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but I'm sure it's a good idea for a five-year-old child to follow his or her parents' advice. Thank you. Then I would like to start tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I want you to bring Gados and Marcus to the parade ground and Roselle to the mansion where I live. Then that is all. I understand. I wasn't sure if I should start out of the blue, so I decided to start tomorrow. When I heard Greg's reply, I left the house and went back to the mansion, excitedly waiting for the next day. 17 Episode 17 Study Together. Back. Table of Contents. Next. The next morning. Master Ars, Roselle is here. After receiving the report from Reitz, I hurried out of the mansion and went to meet him. When I went to the front, I saw Roselle, who had been brought by Greg. Oh, Arsama. I'm sorry for taking the trouble to greet you. Why don't you bow to? Greg grabbed Roselle's head and made her lower it. Well, I've got some work to do. Roselle, don't you ever bother me. With that, Greg left the mansion. Welcome, Roselle, to the mansion as soon as possible. He. When I approach him as I speak to him, Roselle backs away, frightened. Is he that scared? Isn't this more of a category of anthropophobia than shyness? Roselle, I have no intention of harming you. Don't be so frightened. He said this with a smile on his face, so as not to frighten her. But Roselle's expression did not clear. Oh, you're lying. He said. This was the first time he'd ever said the words properly. I'm not lying. I don't believe it. There's no way I have any talent. You're just trying to get me to become a slave or something. Or maybe you just wanted to bully me for fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. As if to break the dam, Roselle started talking fast. He's a child with a very negative mindset. 
He doesn't seem to trust people easily. Well, as a military strategist, should I have that aspect? There would be a problem with being too positive and trusting people too quickly. However, I don't want them to be too wary here. I walked up to Roselle and grabbed his shoulders with both hands. His body was trembling with fear. I stared straight into Roselle's light blue eyes, moist with tears. I made you come here because I am convinced you have talent. I never meant to harm you. Um, when I said that seriously, I felt Roselle's trembling subside a little, but I didn't believe it so easily, and after a few seconds, Roselle turned to the side and removed her gaze. There would be no point in saying anything more with his mouth. Then follow me, I said, and headed to the study room where I always studied with Reeds. Is she going to be okay? On the way to the house, Reeds asked in a whisper. Even after entering the mansion, Roselle is scurrying around with an anxious look on her face. He looks quite alarmed. Wan Wan, Arsis, the bird dog, a pet in the mansion, came running towards me. Whoa, it's a beast, too. The moment Roselle saw Arsis, she ran away and hid behind a nearby statue. You're too scared. It's totally fine and it's not a fierce beast. I stroked Arsis head to show him that I was okay. Then he flapped his wings on his back with a flap. He does this when he's happy. Isn't he cute? She looks like a winged pet dog Pekingese Pekingese, so she's not scary, just cute. He looks cute in that state, but yes, he transforms into a Cerberus. When the food comes, it transforms into a scary Cerberus, right? Yeah. Well, I was called in to feed the guy. That's what I'm talking about. I like small guys. I'm sure of it. Again, he speaks too quickly and puts out negative thoughts. This is a different vector than Charlotte again, and you have a habitual personality. She's scared, so I call a servant over and send her out to walk Arsis. This won't scare you, will it? I say, but Roselle is still scurrying around, still wary. After wasting a lot of time, I arrive at my study room. There are many books in my study room. Speaking of which, can Roselle read? The literacy rate in this world is not as high as in Japan. The probability of being able to read properly is very low, since I was five years old before that. I can only read a little. If you can't read, the first thing you need to do is to learn to read. I couldn't read Leeds at first either, but after about five days of study, I was able to read quickly. It took me about three weeks to learn it, and that's when I was reminded of the difference in talent. Roselle must be quite grounded if she has a high limit of intelligence. Considering that he was still a child and absorbed quickly, it wouldn't be surprising if he learned it faster than reads. I'll study on my own today and you can teach Roselle how to write. I'm sorry, sir. I decided to do my own study and leave it up to reads to teach. Roselle was frightened, or maybe she was obedient to what Reitz said. I'm not sure if I can learn properly with that look. I concentrated on my own studies, trusting that Reitz would be able to handle it. However, when you don't have a good Reitz to teach you, it's hard to make much progress. I'm studying tactics, but I don't know much about actual combat to begin with, so I'm not sure what I'm getting into. Hmm, let's study something else and I can leave the tactics to the military strategists. I'll focus on geography and history. And so I changed my studies in such a way that I didn't learn anything properly after all. After all, my academic ability in my past life was middle or lower middle. It was impossible for me to concentrate on my studies like a demon. Quite a bit of time has passed, so let's see how well Roselle has mastered the letters. I stopped studying and looked at Roselle and Reitz, and saw Roselle reading something quietly. Reitz looks at Roselle without saying a word. What do you mean by this? Don't tell me you've already fully mastered the letters. The characters in this world are closer to English than to Japanese. Since they don't use more than one type of character, the level of difficulty to learn it is lower than Japanese, but even so, it's astonishing that they learn it this quickly. I know it's hard to believe, but, her swallowing ability is a bit uncommonly good. After he finished learning the letters, I made him read because he showed interest in the book. Are you reading the book correctly? Yes, 
This isn't actually the first book. It's the third book. Nonsense. There are 300 pages in each book. I read very quickly anyway. That's how he understands what's going on. He doesn't respond to me while I'm reading, and he's terribly focused on what he's reading. When he's finished, he asks me a few questions about the book and I answer them. I have to sit and wait while Roselle reads. But there are geniuses out there. Roselle seems to be so grounded that it makes Reitz groan. At first I thought this boy was okay, but after all, it seems that there is no mistaking Master R's ability to see through people's talents. Afterwards, Roselle read several books in succession, as if she had grown fond of them. As night approached, he fell asleep, as if his head was tired or as if his batteries had suddenly run out. I ordered the servants to take Roselle home. 18 Episode 18, Rosalie's Personality. Back. Table of Contents. Next. Then Roselle began to study with me every day. The second and third time, he was frightened, not completely off guard, but the more times he came to the quarry, the more he seemed to understand that we weren't the ones who were going to cause him harm. Now, for the twentieth time, I'm completely used to it. He began to call Reitz his teacher and dismissed me as ours. He also reads a great deal of books, and is on the verge of reading every book in my study room. Books are quite valuable in this world, so it's not a tremendous amount, but even so, it's not an amount I can read through in 20 days, so I'm a terrific fast reader. He's also acquired a lot of knowledge that an average adult would not know. However, even so, the number of wits still hasn't skyrocketed that much to 48. Perhaps the status of intelligence is not something that can be raised by having a simple memory or knowledge. It's important to know how to use the knowledge you acquire in a meaningful way. Still five years old and inexperienced in life, Roselle didn't know how to use his knowledge, and no matter how much knowledge he acquired, he probably wouldn't be able to become that high in wits. However, if you consider his wisdom limit, as he gets older and gains more life experience, he will surely be able to use the knowledge he has acquired in a meaningful way and his wits should continue to rise. Anyway, I think it's important for him to acquire a variety of knowledge for now. Fortunately, he has shown an interest in reading. If he decides to acquire knowledge on his own initiative, he will learn faster than if he had to learn it from others. His studies are progressing well, but there were some things that bothered me about Roselle. Today, as usual, Roselle came to the mansion to study, but she seems to be very depressed, as if something has happened at home. He doesn't read his books, but sits in a gymnasium and buries his face between his knees. He is in a position where he does his best to appeal to those around him as if he is depressed. It's not the first time Roselle has been like this. This is what happens on the days when I'm angry with Greg at home. I listen to him to comfort him. You're mad at me again? Why are you mad at me? As if it was hard to say, Roselle shuts up. Have you been pissing in your sleep? Ugh. I let my voice trail off, as if he was right. As I've said before, we all piss ourselves in bed when we're kids. Don't worry about it. Do you do the R's? I was silent. Bedtime urination is a phenomenon that occurs in young children because their urinary system is immature. In other words, it is not something that can be prevented because the mentality is adult. When I was about three years old, I urinated in bed several times, and each time I felt so embarrassed that I wanted to die. Fortunately, my urinary system developed faster than others, but I don't urinate in bed now. If he answered honestly that he doesn't now, he might hurt Roselle. He wonders if he should lie, and there is a slight pause in his response, wondering if he should lie. In that pause, Roselle seems to have guessed. No, it's just me. Shit, I'm going to cut this dick off. Wait, wait. What an outrageous thing you're trying to do. Roselle is carrying a knife, I don't know if it's for self-defense, but she carries a knife, and she pulls it out and tries to cut her own figs off. I hurriedly stop his crazy behavior. And don't stop. If only this hadn't happened. No, don't do it. Cutting it off won't fix it, it'll just make it worse. And it's pretty painful. When he said that, Roselle's hand snapped to a stop. I is it hurting? 
Of course. How much? Instead of getting your shins kicked, it's going to hurt a lot more than that. I've never done it before, though, so I don't really know what it's like. Frightened by the fact that it hurt, Roselle put the knife away. Huh, a guy who tries to do something outrageous. This is why dealing with children is so tiring. This kid's flaw is that he's still too negative. If you're going to be a military strategist, positive thinking alone won't be good, but still, being as negative as Roselle would not be good either. Can't we somehow make his thoughts a little more positive? I want to do something about it now, as much as possible, because if he gets older and stays like this, I won't be able to change it. Will you discuss the specific method with Reitz later? After Roselle left, I discussed Roselle's character with Reitz. Yes. Putting aside the good and bad of being a military strategist, Roselle's character was on my mind as well. It's not a very pleasant thing to see when you have so much talent and yet you think you're inferior. It seems I wasn't the only one who wanted to do something about Roselle's personality. Roselle's negativity is entirely due to her father, Greg. I think his constant denial has caused him to be negative. I agree with you on that. Do you think we should just let Greg praise him? If you order Greg to praise Roselle, but don't make him really praise her, he'll probably notice because it's a clever Roselle thing. I think it would be good if we could get Roselle to do something that would impress Greg. To impress. What would it take to show Roselle how smart she is? To show Greg, the hunter, how easy it is to understand, isn't it still to use your brain and hunt your prey? For example, how about letting Roselle come up with some useful new traps to hunt, and then using them to show how smart Roselle is? Traps, may be difficult. If Greg is a hunter, he knows a lot of traps in his own right, and no matter how clever he is, coming up with new traps isn't that easy. Hmm, okay. It certainly wouldn't be easy to create a new trap. Was it difficult for Roselle, who was only five years old, to do so? But it's not a bad idea to let him make them. In order to develop knowledge, you can't just read books. You have to actually think about things. Thinking up traps for hunting is good practice in that sense. Would it be good practice for Roselle to improve her wits? If that makes an awesome trap, contrary to what I expected, I can get my father to admit it, and even if I can't, if it's good practice, I might as well let him try it anyway. I demanded of Reitz that he let me try to make a trap tomorrow when Roselle came over. 19 Episode 19 Trap Back Table of Contents Next Wanna? The next day, when Roselle came to study, Reitz suggested that they make a trap. Yes. You, too, son of a hunter, would know a few things, wouldn't you? At Reitz's question, Roselle shook her head. I don't know. I mean, what's a trap? He uttered something unexpected. Oh, you don't know the trap? Doesn't your father hunt by any means other than bow and arrow or direct combat? I won't. Really? I didn't expect it. Well, I'm not that familiar with the world of hunters either. If Greg doesn't know what a trap is, then he's more likely to admit it, even if the trap Roselle made isn't that complicated. So what's a trap, Doc? A trap is a way of catching a beast by setting a trap. The most famous one is the pit. They dig a deep hole in the ground, cover it with a thin wooden board, and put dirt and leaves on top of it to make it look like a nondescript hole. If you step on that, you'll fall into the hole. Wow, whoever thought of that is really smart. Are you smart? I've never really given much thought to pitfalls, because I've known about them for some time now. Indeed, the first human being to come up with the pitfalls was probably smart. But if you think about it, I don't think it's a good idea to hunt that way. Because if your prey doesn't accidentally step on a hole, it's useless. Roselle mumbles and puts her right index finger to the area between her eyebrows. It's a habit he does when he thinks about something. If I put the bait where the pit is, they'll trap me. Mumbling, Roselle began to mutter. One after the other, he uttered a thought. Roselle, when you're done thinking, draw a diagram of what kind of trap you're going to make. I'll have a piece of paper and some writing materials ready. I don't paint, okay? Just so you know, it's easier to understand on the diagram. 
That's okay. Okay, I'll write it down when I'm done thinking about it. Roselle made a thinking gesture and began mumbling her thoughts again. He is quite focused. In this state, he often doesn't even notice when he speaks to me. Can I make a trap for Roselle? I don't know, but it sounds like you're trying very hard to concentrate and make it anyway. This might be something to look forward to. Yeah, there was nothing more I could do, so I watched Roselle as she tried her best. I somehow looked into the traps that are actually used in this world. Apparently, in this Lumerg, there is no practice of using traps to take prey. Reitz, who is not from Lumberg, thought that traps were used for hunting, so traps must be used in other areas. Reitz also knows that traps are used, but he doesn't know what kind of traps they are, so in the end, there's not much I know about traps. I try to figure out what kind of traps I would like to use in my own way, but surprisingly this is not as easy to come up with as I thought it would be. To begin with, I don't know much about the biology of the animals that are commonly hunted in this world. So it's not so easy to make a trap. Roselle, being the son of a hunter, has quite a bit of knowledge about animals, so I'm okay with that. Halfway through, I gave up thinking about traps. However, the fact that there is no trapping in Lamerg means that if Roselle comes up with a good trap, rather than being recognized by Greg, it will contribute to improving the food production capacity of the village. That would kill two birds with one stone. I waited for Roselle to come up with a trap, with a little hope. Dozens of days passed. Finished. Roselle, who was facing the paper, said with a hearty smile. It looks like we've finished making the trap. All right, then, let's see the diagram. Yeah? Roselle looked unusually cheerful and showed the diagram of the trap to Reitz. He seemed very happy to have completed it. Reitz looks closely at the diagram. Naturally, since this is the first time he has drawn the diagram, there are many parts that cannot be understood just by looking at it. Reitz has Roselle explain it in places. I looked at the diagram with him and listened to his explanation. Here's what Roselle had in mind for the trap. First of all, Instead of going after a wide variety of animals, he would focus on one. In the case of the trap that Roselle came up with this time, she targeted the SUU animal that lives in large numbers in the forest near the village. It's not just a matter of time before you'll be able to get your hands on it. The taste of its meat is similar to that of a cow. It's not marbled like Weijiu beef, but tastes like low fat Aussie beef. SUU have a trait of rushing at yellow things and this is a trap that they use to their advantage. The first step is to prepare a large enclosure. Inside the enclosure, you place a cloth soaked in the smell of apples, Sue's favorite food. Sue, who has a good nose, will now gather around the trap. Attach a door to the enclosure, but add some ingenuity to this door. I painted the outside of the door yellow and made it look like a pet door, so that when Sue rushes to the door, she can get in. The door should be designed so that if Sue rushes in, she has to pull it open from the inside. That way, once inside, Sue would not be able to get out. After hearing the description of the trap, I thought it was a pretty effective trap. But Leeds, I'm a little concerned about that. What about the durability of the door? If you make the door brittle, it'll break, and if you make it too hard, Sue could pass out and block the entrance if she hits her head on the door. I pointed out my concern. Sue's head is hard and she won't pass out easily. You should use something hard for the door so it doesn't break. Roselle quickly answered Reitz's question. I see, and how do you plan to deal with the captured Sue? If we make a human door in the enclosure and the number we capture is small, I think we can just go in and take them down normally. Sue's a coward, so unless she's wearing something yellow, she rarely rushes at you. If they have nowhere to run, I don't think it's too hard to hunt them. If there are too many of them, I'd have to attack them from the outside with a bow. I think we just need to set up one simple turret. Hmm. Reitz thinks. Let's make one. First, let's make the enclosure narrower and build one that's large enough to catch only a couple of them. Since we won't even build a turret, it won't cost that much, so we won't have to report back to Ravensama. If that gives us any results, 
We can ask Raven Sama to make a larger one. Okay, R Sama. Yeah, I'll do that. But I didn't know they would really come up with a proper trap. It's astonishing for a five year old. As I recall, Roselle had an A for weapons aptitude. The trap could be called a weapon, depending on how you look at it, so maybe that's part of it. Anyway, it was decided to actually create the trap that Roselle had in mind. 20 Episode 20 Result Back Table of Contents Next The making of the trap was done by a few servants. The material of the enclosure was wood. Stakes were driven into the enclosure and wooden boards were fitted between the stakes. The wooden boards were thick enough not to break even if they were to be rammed into the enclosure. There is a small hole in the board so that you can see what is going on inside. It's about the size of a tatami mat. Sue says that this will hold three bodies. However, if the board was full, there was a risk that a Sue rushing in from the outside might hit the Sue inside. Well, since this was an experiment to see if it was effective against the trap, we decided to ignore a problem that could be solved by making the enclosure wider.